Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Real glad that you could join us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Jonathan Chen this morning. He's joining us here as Chief of Cardiothoracic Surgery in the Cardiac Center at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. He's joining us to discuss congenital heart disease, or CHD, and the advances in prenatal diagnosis and imaging that have allowed for early treatment for babies with CHD. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Chen. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks. Happy to be here. Well, I mentioned your uh, position there at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Give us a brief look into your uh, professional background and talk a little bit about what it means to uh, be a cardiothoracic surgeon. <laughs> How much time do you have? Um, <laughs> uh, brief, uh, brief look. I, was, uh, I trained in New York City at uh, Columbia and stayed there at New York Presbyterian for the, the balance of probably 20 odd years. I uh, was in Seattle at Seattle Children's for five years uh, where I was the chief and then joined the group at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in 2018. And um, the Cardiac Center at CHOP is a, um, uh, as your listeners probably know, is, is uh, one of the leading centers in the United States. We have about 900 people in the Cardiac Center, roughly 90 cardiologists, six surgeons, uh, you know, 15 intensivists, about a 32-bedded ICU. Um, so it's a busy place. And uh, one of the interesting things that you're maybe bringing up is that um, because of what we call the special delivery unit at CHOP, which is a place where uh, healthy mothers deliver in the hospital, and so it's healthy moms with uh, complex uh, fetuses, uh, we are um, we have a, a somewhat unusual demographic for our, our um, cardiac patients, which is that we have the highest number of newborns operated on in, in, uh, in the United States. What is congenital heart disease? Uh, well, congenital heart disease is uh, you know heart disease that you're born with. Uh, we presume that it's uh, genetic uh, in its origin, just as you know, blonde hair and blue eyes are genetic. There are some inherited forms of congenital heart disease. They're relatively rare, uh, but as we start to get a better handle on the um, whole genome, uh, we have a better idea of um, some of the perturbations in the genome that that are pretty highly associated with cardiac defects. How prevalent is uh, CHD? Uh, it's roughly one percent, uh, so it's, it's one in one hundred and twenty. So that means about forty thousand uh, babies every year are born in the United States with congenital heart disease. Uh, now, most of those will be benign forms of congenital heart disease, so they they are um, uh, may never need an intervention their entire lives. Uh, but for those kids who have really complicated congenital heart disease, it, as it carries with it a pretty significant mortality if it's left unrepaired. How has this condition traditionally been diagnosed and treated? A variety of ways. Um, you know, when I was uh, beginning my training, a lot of this was um, postnatal uh, uh, problems in the nursery. And that was because our fetal imaging was not, the technology really wasn't quite as good. Nowadays, uh, about probably 85% of the children are diagnosed fetally who are born in our hospital. Uh, and that changes the game considerably because that means that it's not a five alarm fire when they're born. We know with pretty good accuracy. Uh, what their uh, significant cardiac lesion is. We know what the initial um, uh, uh, therapies will be. For those kids who are really risky, we actually will have them, at, at least at the Children's Hospital, will have them deliver in the uh, delivery room, uh, excuse me, in the operating room. And so we will actually sort of have, uh, we'll orchestrate, uh, you know, the ballet of the delivery and procedure and so forth. That's relatively rare, but for those uh, babies who are that um, uh, emergent, uh, they, they really could not survive in another in a different location. So even uh, when I was in Seattle, for example, babies were born outside the hospital, uh, but uh, because we didn't have delivery rooms, so they'd have to, you know, be able to survive an ambulance ride even from cross town. Uh, and sometimes these babies are, are too sick to even tolerate that. So it's, it's been a big uh, advance for us to have deliveries in the hospital. Early detection, as far as the advances in, in diagnosis and imaging, are really crucial in, in some of the survival rates. Uh, yes, and you know the um, uh, the the main focus uh, in terms of survival has been the area that had the highest mortality. So those have been the complex babies undergoing operations in say the first week of life. And depending on the lesion, some of those kids, uh, the mortality, the operative mortality, so with the operation for thirty days after, is as high as twenty you know, percent. Uh, but, again, uh, many of these kids go on to do fine. And so if you look at the actual numbers of all children born with congenital heart disease, probably about 85-odd percent of them will survive into adulthood, which brings up a whole different uh, problem, which is that now there is a, a massive group of adults with congenital heart disease, which we call ACHD. Mm -hmm. uh, and those patients need their own specialists. They need um, uh, specialists who understand congenital heart disease, so that sometimes it's you know, a pediatric-trained cardiologist, as well as, uh, usual internists, you know, because now they're adults and they're open to all the other adult problems that you know, they can get pregnant, they can get cancer, you know, and so 
there's uh, there it, it makes for a uh, complex um, uh, you know care across many different disciplines. In your experience, what would you say is the single most significant advancement in the imaging and thus the treatment and interventions with these patients? Um, Imaging-wise, I'd say fetal has been the fetal fetal echocardiography has been the game changer for us because again, being able to diagnose at say twenty weeks what we think with pretty good accuracy what the babies will be born with. It allows the parents to prepare for the delivery. It allows the um, providers to also, um, if, the, if it's a, a particularly complicated lead-in, it allows us to prepare as well. But what it really allows is it allows us to um, uh, take out that guesswork in the first 24 hours of life. So when I was first training, babies would be born, their oxygen levels would be low in the delivery room, and then you'd go through this laundry list of diagnoses which that could give you low oxygen levels in the delivery room. And congenital heart disease is on that list, but it's not necessarily the number one thing on that list. And so it would take a while to get to the right diagnosis with some kids. Um, nowadays, that's just it, it's pretty uncommon for us not to know almost exactly what they have and how to treat it, which is just you know amazing. Looking out three, five, ten years, what do you see as far as uh, the future for cardiac treatment and interventions? Um, you know, the future is bright. The uh, technology keeps evolving faster than we can imagine. Uh, I think for Catheter-based and surgery, uh, surgical interventions, uh, the technology part has been involving miniaturizing devices, so taking a lot of adult-approved devices and making them smaller for kids. Um, I do think imaging has gotten better and better uh, in helping us as surgeons uh, uh, prepare for valve repairs, for example, rather than replacement. And that's something where we call cross-sectional imaging, CT scans or MRIs. That technology has gotten incredibly good so that we can import a lot of those images into virtual reality. And in that sense, we can uh, try different repairs. We can imagine what these um, rerouting procedures or rerouting the blood inside the heart, how, how those will best be done without having to kind of do it by trial and error in the operating room. We get to do the trial and error in advance in virtual reality. And that's, that's been a, a huge advance for Now, this is American uh, Heart Month. Um, how is uh, CHOP involved in any way? Oh, there's all sorts of ways. With the, um, it's a very exciting time to be in the Cardio Center at CHOP uh, because there, there are so many events going on that are around us. We do a lot of educational events. Um, the, uh, traditionally, we have our um, annual meeting, which is the CHOP Cardiology Meeting, which is the largest and only of its kind uh, in the world, actually, uh, focused only on congenital heart disease. We had to postpone it this year because of the Omicron variant. We were gonna, it was supposed to be actually this upcoming week. Uh, but we'll do that in the summer instead. So that used to be our big um, uh, focus for Heart Month. Uh, but there's always a lot of education stuff. Uh, you know, a, a great place to source education is on our website. It's heart.chop.edu. And that has um, a lot of uh, uh, different platforms in which you can find other information about this. You know, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning, Doctor, and I'm hoping that we'll have an opportunity to speak again. Thank you so much for your time. That's great. Thank you. Okay. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Jonathan Chen, Chief of Cardiothoracic Surgery in the Cardiac Center at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.